that's what she's just steady. I, I, I'm so proud of Gabby and so happy for her because you talk about unsung heroes a lot of the time. You know, people, the whole, when she doesn't hit for a couple of games, you know, the, the collective size and Carver. But I feel like the fan base started to really realize what she does on the other side of the ball. And then when we get the shots too, and she's tough as nails, uh, she's huge, huge important for us. And um, she's a huge reason why we're here. So she's big fan. Jan, I wanted to ask you yeah. about uh, Cynthia Falter. Yeah. When you lose a, a true one like Molly was, and you have a positionless player like uh, the way Sid is, how do you, how does she work in that lineup? And and it just seems like she's been flawless. Sid's been working in the lineup for two years, yeah. and Sid has been. But like, what do you need me to do? I'm ready. I'm ready. I can go in. And so we felt this year, coming off of the bench, she could play the two, the three, the four, right? She was a kid that accepted it, would have rather started, but got it. And when her time was called, she was more than ready. And now she can defend the guard. She can defend the four. Now, you know, we're going up against Paige Becker. Does anybody defend the Beckers, right? Ashley Shade's really good. But, but Sid, what I love about Sid and her mindset, this is where she's always wanted to be. And so when you've had a kid like that on the bench, then sadly when you have your, you know, you lose some depth, she's like, I got you. I've been ready. I told you I'm ready. I'm really ready. So let me just go be on the all Big Ten tournament team and let me just go be on the regional team. And whatever you need me to do, I'm going to do that some more and then stuff. That's how confident I am in Sid. She's big time. Coach Lewis, how are you? Good. Good. Coach Lewis, asking me about Paige and Kate, my personality. How are you going to make it just about Iowa and UConn? And how do you get the team mentally prepared to see it in a big picture way? Well, I think what we really started with LSU is just like you know, it was. This is about this 40 minutes. It wasn't about last year. It wasn't about what could possibly happen this year. It was just kind of like we're playing the purple team, right? Much respect, but don't get caught up in it. And this has been kind of fleeting in the first social media, shut your TV off, stay off. And so now we had a, our second team meeting right before practicing today, and Lisa just reiterated that and said, look, and she just told me, she's like, it isn't Paige versus Caitlin. These two women have done amazing things for this sport, and they are amazing. And hopefully both of them will shut, right? And just trying to get our team to understand that if that's what it was, then we should all just sit down and play one-on-one, -on -one, right? And no one really wants to see that. But we understand that's what sells tickets and gets everybody hyper. And I'm betting that Gino is also saying the same thing. It's just like, let's stay right here. So we're just trying to encourage them to stay within, be present, be off the phones, which is good anyway. I think teenagers are trying to tell them too. Um, but I think that's what... I think they're they're locked into that. You know, it's just like they know how good UConn is. We know how sorry they are. Um, it's just you have 40 minutes. So if you're going to get all caught up in Paige, Caitlin, Hoopla, you're going to lose the moment. And I, I don't I don't think Kate Martin wants to lose the moment. I don't think Gabby Marshall wants to lose the moment. I mean, it's not their first rodeo hearing all about Kate, right? So they have some skills to be like, yes, it's all about her, but I gotta do my part. For her to shine, I gotta do my part. And I feel like they're approaching this game exactly like all the rest. How do you hope that you guys really just went through this with LSU? Like, yeah, yeah. Angel in yeah. last year is now. I, I hope it does help because it's the tip fight's really the same because they're three of the top well known names. And even though Breeze was a, a post, Caitlin's a guard, it's still the names that everyone wants to talk about. And now, you know, Paige is amazing. She plays the one to the four, right? So I don't think you're, maybe there'll be some switch off. Maybe they'll start around Caitlin High. But it's, it's not going to be that. So I think we had success with our mindset. And I, I think the team that's going to come out on top is the one that can just enjoy the moment and stay within the 40 minutes. And no, celebrate that we're here, right? You get to play this game here.
at the highest age, and I'd like to think they're going to use the confidence from the LSU game, the prep for it, and then the success of it, and carry it right on into this one. Do you learn last year in the same spot? Yeah, you know, I just, I feel like, you know, every time you can play and have familiarity, it's good for both ways, you know, they've defended Caitlin, you know, we try to defend Paige, we try to or defend Edwards, we tried to defend Paige was her freshman year. Yeah. Um, so you play them, right? So I think that's good in, in a sense. Um, but I think when you get to this point, you know, we just have so much respect. I mean, Gino and Chris, you know, we've been doing it a long time. They've been doing it a long time. I mean, they they grew the game. You know, there's a lot being said now, but I mean, UConn grew that game, right? Um, so just fun to be in the moment. And I think you just, you want to respect that story program, but you don't want to get caught up either. That's the fine line. I mean, you're playing UConn. I mean, Galen grew up loving Maya Moore, right? So it's got you got to strike that as like, hey, yes, that was cool, but this is now, and I think that's where we got to really hit it, or else, you know, that sometimes tradition can just give you ten points real fast. So we gotta, we gotta just get our head game. I think it's all about. What to blow matchup wise? Like matchup wise, like they're down to like six players. Like how much do you balance kind of like the the UConn across the jersey, but you can also like game plan to yes. try to get them in foul trouble. I don't know. What do you, how do you approach well, that? Well, I think you you can certainly look at that, but they're here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you go, oh, you know, I bet people still, they're only 16. They still we're got five, five stars, them. You know, right? you're, you're yeah. like, well, they're here. You yeah. know, they're, they're not all of a sudden now going to be real tired. Yeah. All of a sudden, they're really going to have all this foul trouble. Yeah. I mean, the odds of that are, um, but I think that's <laughs> true. I think you could look at it and be like, we got a little bit more depth. Um, but I feel like what really is going to be the case is that just it's the mental mindset of just doing what we do and knowing that if we do what we do, it's been pretty good for us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to read how they're going to defend us, how they're going to are they switch in the ball strings or whatever and making those adjustments regardless if it was Holy Cross or it's UConn now is keeping that focus right here and just playing to be our best in that 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think whatever they do, the six of them, or you get to eight, or it's just an amazing big one, and Paige can do that, mm -hmm. is that you can't focus too much on that. You've just got to read what they're doing and be the best version of who we can be.